Welcome to the 61st episode of the Global Exclusive Podcast, the FFB Podcast. I am your host, Baros, and I am the only host for this episode. I know, I know, before panic sets in, because you just realize that it's just going to be me alone, unchecked, there's no muspel, no dream, no shadow, no cotton, nobody really to, you know, control me. Um, yeah, I'm a bit worried myself, actually, to be honest. Um, like, we might get sued for this episode. Who knows? I will try to keep it in the pants. I promise. I promise. I mean, I'll do my best. I'll do, I'll, like, I'll, I'll do what I can. Good thing is... It's quite a cl- it's it's quite a dead week. There's not a lot of new content, so I can't fuck that much up. Dream, I'm sorry in advance if I say some shit about math that isn't true. Muspel, yeah, I'll probably mention TMRs and STMRs. You don't have to worry. All right, hey, <laughs> let's get this show on the road, I guess. All right, so let's just jump right into it. So we have a banner that is featuring a new Envy unit, as well as a rerun of old collab units. Now, the old collab units have gotten actually zero changes, so the units themselves are not interesting. I'm not going to go into the merits of these units. You can instead hit our, hit up our old episodes on uh, um, on any of the networks you're listening to, of course. But I do want to talk a bit about their TMRs and STMRs just to revisit um, and kind of remind you of why it could be worth pulling on this banner. So first, we have Stern. And Stern is known for having a fantastic STMR. But let's first take a quick look at his TMR. So his TMR is a quite nice TMR, actually, still. It's a 50% flat attack increase and a true double hand um, 50%. So not too bad. Like, it's it, it has its use. It's, sometimes you have those 50% remaining and you need some extra attack on it, too. Kind of reminds you of Queen's STMR. That's so nice. But his, his, the big prize here is his STMR, which is Lion Armor, has a decent attack on it, but most importantly, it has LB damage 50% increase on the armor. This is the armor that people have been using to like get their damages up. It's a straight and big upgrade over uh, Aldor King Reign's TMR. And it's very, very juicy. It's it's very efficient in that slot for any LB damage dealer. And for many of the hybrid units that want to do damage with both their LB as well as chaining, such as, well, Savior of Souls Lightning, this is a really good piece of armor. And then the other unit on the banner is Ketone. Uh, I have actually recently learned it's actually supposed to be Ketone and not Ketone. Which is which struck me as weird, but apparently in Japanese, her name is Kiton, or something like that. Shit, I don't know. Like I don't know this shit, Jesus. I, it's like, you know me. I don't know anything really. Anything I say here is probably wrong. So you're gonna have to live with that. You're listening to an entirely worthless podcast. Wow, that's. I just realized that is actually pretty stupid of you. I mean, because we all know, nothing I say here is gonna be correct. <sighs> But hey, at least we're trying, right? Anyway, Ketone has a pretty decent evasion TMR, 20% evasion with a decent 43 attack on it, some other weird stats because this is one of those TMRs that comes from War of the Visions and in War of the Visions all items have weird stats. Don't ask, I don't know, I stopped playing that game because it literally drained my soul. I could not play that game anymore. However, her STMR is pretty decent. It's weird because it only has 25% true dual wield, but it has 70% attack on it. So in those weird cases where you're kind of comboing it with something else that gives you 25%, like isn't Aloha's, uh, Aloha Laswell's STMR? Or uh, yeah, STMR, that, I don't remember. Could be. 
Anyway, when you're combining it with something else that's 25%, it's still a very decent attack. So it's nice, not too bad. I'm going to say the big prize for TMRs and STMRs on this banner is definitely Stern's STMR for that thick, thick armor that has 50% LB damage as well as a high attack stat. And Ketone is, yeah, if you get two Ketones, that's nice. Now, to the actual NV, the surprise NV upgrade, or not, not NV upgrade, the surprise NV unit on this banner um, is actually Venera, and Venera is surprisingly talented. Now, in Discord, I heard people talking about her as a, um, wait, high floor, low ceiling unit. Yeah, that's it. So kind of, you don't need much to get her going. She's very self-sufficient. She has all the buffs and abuse and shit you, you expect. She has all of that on her own. <laughs> Uh, but her growth isn't exceptional when you give her external support or when you tack on STMRs because she gets pretty far um, already. That's of course not a negative thing. In fact, that's an incredibly positive thing for new players as she still clocks in, if you're looking at the wiki uh, damage sheets, as the highest damage dealer right now with a very respectable burst as well. She just falls slightly below last gen in burst which is very impressive. So as a unit, okay, okay, I really hope I'm not saying anything wrong. Like I am super nervous about this. I don't know about you all that are listening, but I am really nervous. I could be saying a lot of wrong stuff here. Yeah, let's try. So yeah, as a unit, she is a breaker. And as a breaker, she has, well, sorry, she's not just a breaker. She's a breaker that deals a fuck ton of damage. But as a breaker, she has 85% breaks and you can't sustain it fully because she has one cooldown that has a one turn um, one turn of no breaks. So it's a three turn duration, four turn cooldown. But she does have four uses of her um, Magnus, or not, not Magnus, um, Grandis ability, right? That's what we call them nowadays, Grandis ability, that also has 85% breaks for four turns. So, like, you can use that to fill the gaps f four times, so it's still going to be a very respectable amount of turns you can have full break up. But the more important thing I want to mention about her Magnus ability is that it actually has a 90% defense break on it. Now, for DV purposes, I mean, it, it, it's always good. For DV purposes, it's not as big as for trials that don't have passive stats because a DV, a boss usually has passive stats that are not um, counted with, or, or they are not breakable, right? They're, they're not uh, reduced by the break. But it's still going to be a damage increase for your um, physical teams. And it's also going to be a very, very strong damage increase for any physical base trials that you can break defense on that don't have passive stats. We saw this recently on the Sandworm trial where actually a Savior of Souls Lightning as a breaker alone increases damage by 50% of your team. Now that's crazy. Nera can do the same, which is really cool, gives her a lot of niche use, and I mean niche in the way of, yeah, and she's also still our strongest DPT damage dealer, physical damage dealer. So a very strong unit, very, very strong unit, and her burst comes out of her Brave Shift, where she actually has a very strong hitting uh, LB that also gives her a 50% dark amp. That is pretty thick. So what you do, so so this this unit is really like very versatile. You can use her. She's kind of like a really souped up version of uh, Riku, where she can break, and she can also do a lot of damage. She can also do burst for DV. So it's it's really good. There's nothing really bad to say about her except the fact that her LB is dark locked. So it's kind of the same drawback that Riku has. Um, on the final boss of DV, this doesn't matter, but it might matter on uh, earlier stages, although those stages are never actually a problem, so depends. It's of course going to be a problem if you're planning on using her again on a trial that has resistances against dark, of course, but I mean, that, that, goes, that goes without saying. She would be a better unit if it was not an elemental, yes. 
Anyway, super cool unit, decent sprite. I can't stand Venera in the original game, in War of the Visions, because fuck me, War of the Visions is over-sexualized. There's like tits hanging out of the icons for the units in War of the Visions. It, it's so blatant, it kind of makes me slightly angry playing that game. But they're like, you know, selling the sex so far, it's just stupid. I just, I, yeah, I just don't like it. And, and her whole shtick in the original game is that she is kind of this assassin hired to assassinate Lord Dario. Um, but then she actually falls in love. But then Lord Dario has this terminal illness. So he dies anyway in an attack. And then she's like, I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't know. She has big tits. That's kind of her thing in the game. That is kind of her thing. Um, she did. Um, so, but her sprite is actually delightful in this game because, again, in FFBE, we're not over sexualized, and her BS sprite is actually really good looking. So, anyone that lucks out on a Venera on this banner has a very strong unit in their kit. So, congratulations. Um, big congratulations, in fact. And the 90% defense break is probably going to be useful for. A, a long time to come because you're if nothing going to be using her to increase your damage on dv and since she also does decent damage herself you're not losing that slot to someone that's not doing damage like like you would for save your souls lightning for instance who doesn't do reasonable damage as as a magic dps so here you're actually gaining still a unit that does a lot of damage and can break and it's like really good really good as long as you can use dark all right, and shit, that's like, that's all the content we have this week. Not much more to talk about, honestly. I feel like, um, yeah, this is going to be a very, very short episode. Obviously, we've got DV, but the last stage isn't out as I'm recording this. So I can't talk much about it. So far, it's been a face roll. I've been using my Magic Easy team, still crying that I didn't get Ferris. I did a more 500 Lapis pulls and still no Ferris. But luckily, Terra has been able to still one-shot all the trials up until the difficult ones, which is kind of still as expected, and that's good. One thing that's interesting to talk about is kind of what we also mentioned in the last episode, which is the, the new meta that Bart brings in, because thanks to Bart's godly wind amp to your entire team, not only do you want to focus on doing wind damage in DV, it also makes Faris do more damage than Terra, because... If you're doing a wind-based DV team, you're doing the wind party with the 20% damage, and with the amp, Faris is gonna do more damage than Terra. There was a there was even this dude that did a YouTube video checking if an EX3 Terra in a fire team would out damage an EX1 Faris in a wind team. And thanks to that godly amp, the Faris team won. It was it was in this case, it was like tiny tiny because it was like I think one or a couple of percent only uh, more, but it still says a lot because the Ferris was EX1 and the Ferris was not best in slot, whereas the Terra was best in slot. I wish I knew who made the video because I really feel like I'm talking about someone else's content and I should be shouting it out, but someone someone is bound to help me on the Discord or in the comments in YouTube, please just put in the video that I'm, I'm talking about because it was a really good video to kind of see the damage difference. So it kind of means that if you have an EX3 Ferris uh, that is best in slot, um, you're probably gonna be, you're cr probably gonna look at, I don't know, best, best, best world, like best case scenario, you're gonna be looking at maybe a total of 15% increase or something, pull the number out of my ass, don't sue me for it, but something like that for the entire team, because yes, Faris is gonna hit harder, but a lot of the damage comes from the rest of the damage dealers on the team, like a last gen hitting, of course, as well, so... The total damage increase isn't extreme, but I mean, those 10 to 15% are of course going to make a huge difference as you're trying to cap TV, or not cap, we can't cap TV, but you're trying to get high scores on TV to get a high rank, those 10 to 15% are going to matter a lot. So yeah, win meta is here. Um, I'm, I probably won't be using it because I still need my Terra to do a ton of damage. Um, so I'll probably be using a fire team still, a bit gimped. Um, I talked to Sinzar on the Discord the other day, or, or talked is, is a brave statement. I asked him a question and he answered, we are getting units in the future that are going to have strong fire amps, just like Bart's, meaning that you're going to be able to use Terra, which is great because Terra is a much better girl than Ferris. We all know this. Final Fantasy VI is a much better game as well. Fuck you all that disagree. I don't care about your opinions. 
So that's really good. Like in the future, I think Vivi and Roy are going to have um, strong amps or that's what Sinzar said. I'm sure there's other units as well. And since the damage is so close and Terra already does more damage than Ferris, I'm sure that even a non Bart's level amp is going to be good enough to push Terra over the edge, which is pretty cool. I, or I'm at least uh, excited about being able to use Terra without fe feeling gimped. Gonna be a bit honest though, like my life has been crazy lately, so I have had time tryharding DV. I have had a hard time tryharding DV. And um, so I'm not really reaching those high scores anymore. And that feels like a huge shame to be honest, because I honestly enjoy DV. Let's see if I can change that up this time. I do have my Mazurka that I want to try in a double Dragoon combo with Edgar. Mazurka also does ungodly amounts of damage. So I'm hoping to at least do, re like I'm, I'm probably going to try to at least a little bit try hard to get a Terra Mazurka Edgar team uh, going against the final boss and actually trying to reach a decent score. Let's see. Although I still don't know anything about the final boss, you know, maybe it requires an NVI I don't have and then I'm screwed anyway, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and, and I'm going to try to find the time to do this. So yeah, all in all, quite a slow week, quite nice to get um, the item world back. I had a lot of weapons that I wanted to run through it, especially Mazurka's STMR and some other stuff. Um, so I hope you all are enjoying the item world. It's always nice to uh, get some of those weapons that you obtained through TMRs or STMRs up to par. And DV is always fun, or for the people that enjoy DV, which I am one of, even though I don't have the amount of time I wish I had to put into it. Like I remember back in the day, I was like like a lot of you guys that are listening, you're, you're theory crafting, you're doing your own sheets or you're watching Sinzar's clear videos, trying to figure out the optimal strat for your team to make highest score. And I love that. I miss that a lot. I'm not going to lie. I miss that a lot. But um, let's see if I can at least put in a little bit more effort this time around. And just as a side note, I'm just I'm just going to mention this because people have been pinging me about this like all week since it happened. So in JP, we did hear that there is another Final Fantasy VII banner coming. I'm a bit scared because Final Fantasy VII is kind of the trump card. That's usually the banners that sell the most. People are fucking crazy for Final Fantasy VII units. And it seems like what we're getting is another Aerith. So fuck me, right? I'm now I, I'm going to have two Aeriths that I don't own. That's fantastic. We're getting a new Tifa, which I'm super excited about. Finally, Tifa is going to do more damage than Cloud. And I like Tifa much more than Cloud, so I'm really, really happy about that. But also, we're getting Sephiroth, and that worries me. I mean, Sephiroth kind of feels like the trump card. Why are they pulling out the big guns? Yeah, sure, you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intrograde or Retrograde or whatever the fuck it's called did get announced, so maybe it's a connection to that. But I still feel they're pulling out the big guns. Why Sephiroth, right? Because the, the intrograde, retrograde, whatever bullshit is with y Yuffie, right? Yuffie? Yuffie? Yeah, whatever. The ninja. Like, 14-year-old ninja. So, put it, like, keep it in your pants, you perverts. She's actually um, in this. And uh, so, why Sephiroth, right? Why not Yuffie? So, that's, that's weird. I'm a bit worried. Is this a sign? Is this a sign that the game is dying? I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't I, I don't think so. I hope not. The game is actually doing really well when you look at it on, on charts. But I'm just worried, why are they pulling out the big guns? Maybe because the quarter is ending, you know, and they really, really want to amp those quarterly numbers. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. But still, I, I you know, I am still excited. I mean, there is a slight, tiny, tiny microscopical chance that I'll actually be able to pull the new Aerith, and you know what? Maybe the new Aerith is also actually a good unit. I mean, the current Aerith is a decent healer, I guess, um, but you kind of fell far behind, just like Soul on the magic damage, unfortunately. All the early NVs got power crept, which, which is also something that grinds my gears, I'm going to be honest. The power creep has been way too fast. I, I know some people in Discord don't agree with me, and, you know, all I can say is just fuck you. Um... But I do feel the power creep has been... So sometimes you get this off-banner NV and it's like one of the older NVs. So you're getting like, um, you know, like Axtar or Rain or Sol or maybe, well, Aerith. I would like to get Aerith, but you know what I mean. Getting one of these, you're not super excited because 
the damage is not huge. Um, and they don't really have those niche uses anymore. Rain's amps are not as strong anymore. So that power creep really makes me a bit sad, um, to be honest. So yeah, I'm happy to, to at least see, you know, Aerith come back into the... Because lately I feel we've had a lot more reasonable power creep. Like even Riku, who's now like super old, is still a very relevant damage dealer. Actually super old, is he? Yeah, I guess he's fairly old. He's fairly old. Like, like all the damage leaders have come, have, have actually followed a quite smooth curve compared to the very first MVs. So I like that. And I hope that continues. And I do hope that the new Aerith kicks ass. Some people were saying, ooh, maybe she's an evoker. Um, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't really see the evoker part of her in um, Final Fantasy VII. She does have the whole, you know... Gaia connection thing, but I don't know, I, mm, I mean, it's, mm, yeah, I don't, like, Terra and Faris both are very clear evokers, they're very, both of them connected, like, Faris connected to her pet dragon, Syldra, um, Terra, of course, being half Esper, connected to her father, and the Espers in general, um, so yeah, I don't know, would be cool if she was another evoker, like, one of these big dick, big dick damage evokers, um, haven't actually seen her BS sprite yet, uh, but um, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I, I kind of run out of content and this is really difficult. I'm not going to lie. I've been talking to myself for 30 minutes, give or take. I feel a bit schizophrenic. It's nice that nobody actually interrupts me. But um, that's about it. Yeah. Shit, this episode is already over. Also, it's a lot harder to do dirty jokes when nobody's around. Like, hey, hmm, I need someone to, you know, to be outraged. It's not fun if nobody's outraged. Man, I should, hey, oh my god, I just realized. I should have recorded this episode live. Because at least then I would have a chat to kind of talk to. Because right now I feel a bit schizophrenic. This is not okay. So, the other host, shape the fuck up need to show up on time when we do the episodes all right i'm just kidding life gets get, gets in the way i'm the one I, I definitely have felt that the past few weeks so i get it i get it all right anyway thanks everyone for listening sorry for this being such a weird episode i hope you got something out of it i hope i didn't say too many wrong things about the units you know feel free to correct me in the comments in reddit on youtube um just go into our discord and ping me and say i'm a worthless sack of shit you know just let me like make me feel real bad for not saying something correct about the units sorry sorry i hope i did venera some justice at least mm -hmm.